Good morning. All right, welcome back to This Week at the Chamber, giving you the top four things you need to know going into this week. Here it's August 7th. Yes. And we're ready for another week. We are. We are. Um, Tuesday. Let's first. Yeah, Tuesday. We've got um, a new class of Boone County Leadership Institute. It's going to be Class 35. Class 35. We're uh, thankful for Kinetic by Windstream that's sponsoring again this year. They've yeah. been great supporters of both of our leadership programs. We'll have 17 leaders going through, and tomorrow they'll start with their orientation, learning about principles of leadership and getting a preview of the year and really just getting acquainted with each other, right? So, Yeah, there will be some good icebreakers. They'll get more acquainted with each other, and, and it'll, it, it'll be great. Yep. And then, let's see, t- today, actually. So we did Tuesday, and now we're doing Monday. Uh, okay. I put those out of order on, we're going to say on purpose. Yes. Just to keep people on their toes. We've got an uh, uh, update from the broadband office today. Um, Bob, when he was president and CEO, got a, did a lot of the early conversations about Boone County and our localized group that's helping to direct resources for broadband. And so today I get an update from the state broadband office on some of their activities and the status of what's going on and how, how we can help at the chamber kind of facilitate some of those conversations for, for people in need. Yeah, that's great. Yep. And then we have two ribbon cuttings this week. We do. On Tuesday, we're going to go to Kudu Apparel. Um, It's a screen printing business here in town. We're Mm -hmm. really excited to get in there and see how all of that works and welcome them to the community. Yep. And then one more on Friday, right? Yes, Friday, we're going to welcome Beefaroo officially. Officially welcoming Beefaroo. They've been open, but Mm -hmm. now we're going to go cut the ribbon. So we've got 10 a.m. with Kudu and 11 a.m. with Beefaroo. Sounds great. And you can find them right here. We'll probably not go live, but we'll have some content for them and a photo, of course. We want you to come join us in person and help welcome these new members and new businesses to the community. Yeah, and then you've got some meetings this week as well. Yep, we'll go to some of them or at least be staying in touch. But uh, Quorum Court and City Council both meet this week for their committee meetings and business as usual. Yes. So have lots of meetings this week, working with lots of businesses this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just got back from the Community Development Institute, so we might have some takeaways from that at some point, yeah. but not today. Soon. Not today. So maybe soon. And we don't have a guest today. Okay. Unless Kenzie curates one for us. But uh, as far as I know, thank you for watching and enjoy your week. Sounds great. How about... You cover 63 or 68 counties? 63 counties. 63 of the, 75. of the 75 counties. Could we talk about, we just finished Leadership Arkansas. Right. But you also have been doing the travel schedule around those counties for a while. So could we talk maybe about some of the challenges facing Arkansas and maybe specific to reaching full employment? Because unemployment's really low right now. Right, right. But, There are a lot of problems that we're hearing about and um, not particular to any region. Uh, Something that our researchers are looking into are the disconnected youth. So between 16 and 24 years of age, they're not working, they're not in school, and they're not learning a trade in any way. So where are they? What's happening? So that's that's one thing. Um, I also think that there just aren't enough workers out there right now, or at least not filling the slots or the needs that are available. So trying to figure that out. um, I think with inflation and wage, wages kind of all over the place, I think there's a lot of turnover sometimes, especially in um, those beginner starter roles. I think they just cross the street for $2, come back for $2. Mm. So that's really, you know, it's a huge investment when you're a business owner and you're trying to train somebody and hire them and bring them on board. And then, you know, they run across the street. So um, there's that. And and then I think it was just the lull of the pandemic trying to, to get people back up to speed. Something that happened in the pandemic was um, we saw the childcare. Um, A lot of childcare facilities have not come back. Our community development department, along with our regional economists, they've been working on that and our institute within community development. They're seeing that there is a huge need for childcare. So that keeps a lot of people 
out of the workforce because they don't have child care, as well as we talked about transportation when we were in this round table. Mm-hmm. You were sharing that um, you're really starting to build a trail or a, a, a bicycle track, was it? Is that what you it's said? A, a, it's a 10-foot multi-use trail, so it's both, really. It's, right. So a multi-use trail, and mm-hmm. that's going to circle the entire of Harrison. Well, that's yeah. huge, not for people to get around too. So that can help rural access to transportation. So I think it's all the same when I'm going around the state. I kind of hear a lot of similar patterns as far as what's happening and what's keeping um, the workforce and the labor market low. So it it is a conundrum in some ways, and we're just trying to see what people are doing to change it. I will say, I think they're changing the way they do jobs and renaming things. Sometimes, like, let's use a bank for an example. Something that I've been hearing a lot of is we used to just, they just used to be a teller. Well, now they might add a few more roles to that job as a teller. So now it's just maybe a new name for that. It's more than a teller. You're doing a lot more than Mm -hmm. that. Um, So just realigning the way we think of jobs and the last thing I would say is I think work-life balance has come into play for the younger generation. I think the older generation maybe at some of these manufacturing companies are used to overtime working so many shifts. Well, after the pandemic, a lot of the younger people are like, well, you know, we both want to go to the mm-hmm. soccer game or we both, we don't want to, overtime to them is not worth it. They'd rather be with their family. So I think it's a shift in mindset. That's one thing. Yeah. I think we look at the child care issue. That's another thing. I think we look at transportation and then just, um, we're just missing a job force that we're, we're yeah. trying to do a little more research on the disconnected there's, youth. Yeah, there's a gap. There seems to be a gap there. Right. Um, I had a friend who moved here with his wife temporarily, and then they've since moved away, but he was from one of the northern states. And when you talk about how work-life balance is so important here, uh, that was kind of foreign to him. He was like, I, he's like, I'm taking all the overtime I can get, and nobody else wants these hours. Like, I'm trying to get paid. Right. And everybody else is like, no, I want to go spend time with my family, or I want to go outdoors or something so there's that culture piece of building the right team is also going to help with attrition and the other gaps in the workforce i think right. or i hope and we may see that more because we're in the natural state and there is so much to do outdoors and mm-hmm. there is so much of that life out here that they may not have in other parts mm-hmm. of the country so i do think you s- stop and sit back and think you know i want to enjoy all that we have here mm-hmm.